Uh, hello, my name is Adrian Rivera. I'm here today with Dr. John Carvalho, a professor at Auburn University who also serves as the Associate Director for Journalism. Uh, Dr. Carvalho, thank you for sitting down with me. Thanks for having me. So obviously right now with COVID-19, we're, we're in an unexpected time, unprecedented time, especially for our professors and students. The biggest concern has been with classes. There's been Auburn's offering a variety of different ways for professors to teach their classes, whether that be from fully in-person classes to fully online classes. How are you teaching your classes this semester? I'm teaching a uh, writing class, sports reporting class, and we're in the lab, uh, a 20 computer lab. So I teach with 10 students in class and the rest taking it by Zoom. So you said that there's only room for about 10 people to show up in person. Right. Uh, what is the total number of students in that class? Oh, and there, there are actually 20 who signed up for the class. So we split it up to 10 uh, attending uh, in person and 10 by Zoom. So for the 10 people that show up, are you, do students need to sign up for what weeks they've come in in person or is it just first come first serve? Yeah, it's exactly the, the, the first thing. Uh, I gave the students three options. One is I, I want to take this class strictly uh, by Zoom and the students who uh, do that, it could be they don't have another class on campus, so it's, it's rough to make it on campus. Uh, I have four students in that category. Uh, students who wanna come on a specific day and then students who wanna come may on a specific day, but will come if there's room. And so every day I just kind of uh, kind of rotate them through and create a list of 10 students who will show up to the next class. Gotcha. So what factors went into your decision for teaching your class this way? Well, uh, one of them is that I, I prefer to teach live. And if, and if I can, uh, I, 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 I'll make that work. Um, I know that they've set certain limits like uh, lecture classes of 50 or above. You don't have that decision. It's, it's made for you. It's going to go Zoom. So, and, and teaching a writing course, so much of it is guided practice that I want to have as much time with my students as possible. Gotcha. So, with you being the associate director for the journalism department, what exactly does your job entail for that? Because I, for a lot of our viewers, they may not know what an associate director does. Well, uh, the School of Communication and Journalism has four programs, communication, journalism, uh, public relations, and media studies with an additional visual track. And so we have a director who oversees the entire school, and then four of us who are associate directors who deal with a specific topic. And so I deal with the journalism, I work with the faculty, schedules, uh, and helping specific uh, journalism faculty members with their issues, things like that. So being the associate director, um, how has communication been with the journalism department over what other professors are doing? It seems like, obviously we just said to them, it's your option mm -hmm. and uh, you can decide. And we have a couple of faculty members who for various reasons, uh, including health, have decided to teach Zoom. Uh, other faculty members like myself uh, prefer to teach live. Uh, and so we'd simply communicated to them uh, to let us know what would work for them, let their students know, and, and then take it from there. Uh, do you know roughly what the breakdown is between the fully online classes versus classes that resemble, that have some semblance of in-person for the journalism department? I would say, well, uh, you know, we do have one large lecture class, uh, Journalism 1100, mm -hmm. uh, our, uh, our first class that uh, strikes fear in the hearts of many students. <laughs> and uh, that one's straight Zoom because it generally has m more students than, than 50 in it. Um, in terms of our, I'd say a lot of our writing class, uh, that's, that's not a good number. I'd say probably if you take that, cl that class out, I would say that 60% of 
No, I'd say it's 50, 50. Okay. Um, so we've talked about communication within your department. How has communication been with the provost? Personally, I know it's a difficult situation and I know that there's frustration and I know that communication between the faculty and the provost really reflects a lot of the communication that's been going on between citizens and, and health authorities where it, sometimes the, the information seems to be fluid. But um, I feel that the communication has been good from the standpoint of believing that the provost is, and, and, and all of our academic leadership, is trying to get us through this in the best way possible. Like, like you were saying, it's unprecedented, it's unchartered territory that we're, we're exploring. And uh, I believe that they're, they're doing their best. I've seen other universities make quick decisions on things. Um, and, and I feel kind of good with the process that we're at. I'm, 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 very, I'm very glad after the first week, I'll say it, I'm very glad to be back in the classroom with my students in these circumstances. So do you believe that, and I know you mentioned, you had hinted at this, um, but that do students, do you believe that students learn better at home, you know, in their apartments online, or is there some benefactory to showing up in person? There, there's obviously, I think in person is, is the best. Uh, whether you're talking about uh, a guided learning process like writing or even in a lecture class. Uh, on a college campus, you take out the coronavirus, look at a year ago, there is something about the energy and the atmosphere of the students being all together that I think does create a much better atmosphere for learning and for growth in, in every area. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a believer that if it can be done safely for the students and particularly for the faculty and the staff, we're more likely to be in the, in the, the risk area uh, areas, then uh, yeah, I think it's something that we should do. So as a faculty member, uh, how have you felt about Auburn's response to COVID, uh, specifically with the uh, requirement of having masks, whether you're uh, inside of a building or outside, how have you felt as a faculty member? Well, um, you know, I, I strongly believe in, in, in masks inside. Um, and, and we kind of got into a debate about this because outside in August in Alabama, when you're walking across campus and there's nobody you know, around you, yeah, there's a desire to take it off and, and let your, your, your face breathe a little. But, um, you know, I, I think, like, I, I always exercise common sense. If I don't see anybody, but I'm at the corner of a building, I'll just put it up in case someone comes around the side that I, that I didn't see. Um, I understand the seriousness of it. And I understand, I mean, you're talking about an old faculty member walking across campus. I understand that students outside tend to cluster, tend to see friends and talk to them. That needs to be addressed differently. Um, so yeah, I definitely understand the philosophy behind it. And um, uh, when I talk about slipping it off my face when, when there's nobody around, that's not meant to say that I don't think it's necessary. What are your observations on how the first week has ran? You know, it's interesting because going in, I was, I was a little worried. I had this picture of Titchener Hall being as filled as it is during the semester and me trying to negotiate it. What's happened in practice is um, at my 11 o'clock class, there's only one other class that is actually meeting. Uh, and it's next door, it's Dr. Chon's uh, it's PR research class. So the one thing, and I don't know if you've noticed this, the buildings are pretty empty. So after a week, because of that, and this, that, that's obviously regrettable, I feel a lot safer than I did. I thought I was gonna have to hide out in my room while the clusters of students are moving. But like we, um, our lab is on the second floor of Titchener with Titchener 215, like I mentioned, the large lecture class that had only large lectures in it. It's pretty much empty now. So those classes aren't meeting. 
some classes are meeting downstairs. So my observation is because of the Zoom classes that are meeting, the traffic is so low uh, around campus and in the buildings, at least in Titchener from my experience, that I think it's a lot safer than I, than I was afraid it was going to be. Do you believe that Auburn University is gonna remain open throughout the course of the semester? You know, it's interesting because so many universities are making different decisions. What was it, UC, uh, UNC closed down for two weeks. Other universities were going totally virtual and Auburn decided to uh, bring the students in and offer a variety of courses. Uh, at this point, I understand there's a lot of controversy with students clustering at downtown bars and everything. But at this point, from what I've seen right now, I hope that Auburn rides it out. I hope that Auburn keeps things the way they are. Um, obviously, student infections, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, student infections may go up, meaning quarantines, things like that. Um, and I have, I have had students who have had to move to a Zoom situation uh, out of precaution. One of them tested negative, but, but stayed, uh, is, is doing Zoom out of uh, precaution. Obviously, if, if this results in student hospitalizations, we need to take a second look. If it results in faculty staff hospitalizations, we need to take a second look. But absent that, I know we'll have infections. I know we'll have students quarantining. I know we had uh, apparently a fraternity is quarantining. Several members of a sorority are quarantining. Other students are quarantining. If we can get through with that, I do hope that they write it out and that we maybe see a migration back to campus of individual classes where as the situation improves, they can then return to that mode and not have that disruption of going totally online um, unless uh, health and safety dictate it. I do believe that's all of the questions that I have for you. I uh, thank you for sitting down with me. Thank you, AJ.